so now uh, when we have discussed in our last session that when we create a class class is a container a biggest block of the program in which we encapsulate the methods that is bind the methods together and method performs the action and main method is the entry point of my program where we create the constructor of this class constructor means creating the new memory for the class and when the class constructor is created that is home is created then only the members of the home that is kitchen and drawing room will be created so these are the objects of my class home and we can call these methods through the reference of the constructor the constructor returns the reference variable of the type home class using which we are calling our method okay now when the method is performing the action so method performs the action on some data this is the input to the method okay so now today we will be discussing the data types in java so first of all what is a variable so variable is a container which is store the data like a container in my kitchen a box in my kitchen if i put a sugar inside the box it will become a sugar box and if i put a salt in my box it will become a salt box so it means box does not have any type the role of a box is to store the data and it is the data which i am storing it if i am storing salt it will become salt box if it is storing some uh, uh, sugar it will become a sugar box so similarly variable in java is a container which holds the value so i am just creating one class say by the name of data type so we already discussed how to create a class and how to add a main method in it and now in this data type class we are today we are discussing the data type so there are two type of the data is available with us one is called primitive type of the data primitive data type primitive data type are the data types whose memory and range we know like take example if i write byte b is equals to 45 so it means b is a variable <coughs> and b is holding 45 is equal to is assignment operator <coughs> and 45 is of type byte so it means we can say that 45 is of byte type if i change it to the int b will remain same now i will say now b is a variable which is holding 45 which is of int type so it means b does not have any type b is a variable basically and the value which it, it is holding so it is specifying that value type that is 45 is of int type or a byte type again i am making it byte only now when i am holding 45 it is not giving me any error but if i hold 127 again it is not giving me any error but if i store 128 it is giving me the error that it is saying that 127 is of int type it is treating it as a int type and it is saying now you are storing it in a byte type which is not permitted what you can say mismatch cannot convert from <coughs> int to byte it is saying so it means it is treating it as a int but if i write 127 now it is okay so what i am trying to tell is that byte can hold the value up to the range of 127 so it can hold the value up to the range of 127 and it takes the memory of one byte one byte space it occupy 
even if I am writing zero in it, it will take one byte. Even if I'm storing 10 or 100 in it, it will take one byte. Maximum I can store is 127. That is the maximum range it can take. Again, I'm writing one more short variable is equals to 32767. So again, if I write 32767, it is not giving me any error. But when I write 32768, again, it is giving me the error, same error. So it means here also, it has a limit up to 32767. And it occupies the two bytes of the space. Even if I'm writing zero, it will take two bytes. Even if I'm writing 32767, it will take the two byte. Again, if I write int i is equals to, it also has a range that you can check from the internet. Int range in Java, you can check from here. And uh, this is the range. Again, it is not unlimited. You can store unlimited type of unlimited data. This is the maximum size it can store. Up to this size. And it occupies four bytes of the space. If again, I store more than it, it will give me the error. Is out of the range. So it means that is the maximum limit I can store. And if I want to store more than it, then long. Long is also having some size. This is the this is the maximum size. Now this is the maximum size Java can store. It cannot store greater than this size. And we have to specify L with it. Because it is greater than int. So it is not an int type. So we have to specify it that it is a long type of the data. So I have to write L with it. So again, it is taking up to this size and it takes the eight byte of the space. So like there is a container in a kitchen. One is half kg capacity. Another is one kg capacity. Another is five kg capacity. So if you put the container on a shelf, Half kg will occupy the small size, 1 kg will occupy the bigger size and 5 kg will occupy the more bigger size. Even if you are keeping the box empty or fill up, it will take the same size. So similarly, byte will take one byte. Even if it, you are holding it small data or bigger data, it will take only one byte of the space. Now, every box has a capacity. Half kg box can store item up to the half kg. One kg box can store the item up to the one kg. Five kg box can store the item up to the five kg. So similarly, these are the containers which can hold the data and they have a range which we have specified in front of you. So these are number type of the values and for that, Byte, short, int, long are the data types available with us and as per our requirement, as per the data, we can choose the contents. Now, if again I write int y is equals to 67.76, it will give me the error because we cannot store the decimal value inside the byte, short, int or long. Only non-decimal value can be stored into it. For that, we have a, another data type that is called double. And here, int is a default in Java. Whenever we take a number type of the data without decimal, Java takes int as a default data type. Similarly, 
डबल इज अ डिफॉल्ट डाटा टाइप फॉर डेसिमल एंड इट ऑक्यूपाई द रेंज ऑफ एट बाइट्स वन मोर वी कैन टेक इज फ्लोट अगेन सिक्सटी सेवन पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स नाउ वेन आई एम राइटिंग सिक्सटी सेवन पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स इट इज टेकिंग फोर बाइट्स फोर बाइट ऑफ द स्पेस बट इट इज गिविंग मी द एर Now what is the error? The error is cannot convert from double to the float. Whenever we writing decimal type of the data, Java takes it as a double type of the data by default. And when I am writing float x is equal to sixty seven point seven six, it will treat this data as a double type of the data, and which is occupying eight byte byte of the space. and i am holding it in a float which is 4 byte so it means i am holding bigger value in a smaller container so what we have to do we have to either type cast it down cast it like this so we can down cast it that 67.76 i am down casting to the float or or what we can do we can write float x1 is equals to 67.76 and i can suffix f with it so like we were suffixing suffix l with it we can suffix f with it so these are the suffix available with us we can also write d but that is optional it is not compulsory to write d because it by default takes the Double type of the data whenever we are writing decimal. With the float, we have to specify that it is a float type of the data. Hence, it is compulsory to write f with it, or otherwise we have to downcast it. Now, if I want to store character, then I will write character. And character we have to write within single quotes, single character. So it stores only. Single character within single quotes. You cannot write it within double quotes. Double quotes will be treated as a string. So only single value can be stored within single quotes, and it can be alphabet, it can be number, or it can be any special character. But you cannot store two characters. Like if I store eleven. it will be error because it is two characters if i store ab it is a error so i can store only single character of any type within single quotes correct and last one is boolean which stores true or false and character also stores the size of 2 bytes and it stores the size of 1 bit so these are the primitive data types available with us primitive data types are the data types in which we know the size how much size they are occupying and we know the range how much how much range of the value they are taking this is called primitive data types in java another is and what is the variable these are the variables p s i l these are the variables now another is called non primitive non primitive non primitive is a data whose memory and range i do not know like here i know the memory how much memory size it is taking how much range it is taking we know but in non primitive data types we do not know the memory size and range and i am writing all class type of 
data is non primitive like take example if i create the constructor of this class data type is a class i have created and if i write over here data type ob is equals to new data type here so again ob is a variable like flag is a variable cx is a variable x1 is a variable similarly ob is a variable like here i am writing is equal to here also it is is equal to means assignment and what is this new new we have told in our last class that it will create a new class it will initialize the new class so it will create the class objects and like here we have written boolean care float to specify the type of the data here that 67.76 is a float type here 67.76 is of double type so similarly when this data is created so we are specifying the type that this new data type is of class data type so hence it is same like here flag here it is ob here it is boolean it is data type is equal to value is equal to value but here if somebody ask me ki sir you are saying that it will create a memory how much memory it is creating like here i have written 1 by 2 by 4 by 8 byte so i'll say ki i do not know how much memory it will take how much size it will take so it means it is a non primitive type of the data i do not know memory size and range non primitive again if i write over here a string name is equals to parag or i write a string email is equals to abc at the rate gmail dot com or I write a string mobile is equals to nine eight one zero nine two six two three nine anything like this. So if you see, it is looking like here, like byte b is equal to one twenty seven, short s is equal to this. Similarly, a string name is equals to parag, but A string is not a data type. A string is not data type. A string is a class. A string is predefined class. If you look at it, here the color is same, different. short end long it is coming in red pink color but here when i am writing string it it is not coming in pink color okay and a string stores multiple characters here we are storing only single character but a string stores multiple characters of any type it can be alphabets it can be alphanumeric A special character, it can be only numeric. So anything written within a double quotes, multiple characters, it stores multiple characters. Multiple characters, and anything written within a double quotes. will be a string so it it means a string is a non primitive class a string is not a data type if somebody ask me ki like here you are saying byte is taking 127 it is taking one byte so then a string can how much value it string can take what size it takes so i say it is a non primitive class I do not know the memory size and range. Okay. 
Now if I take my mouse over to string, so you see, it is saying the string class. So string is a class. But if I take my mouse over to byte, it is not giving me any option. If I write over here, b dot, I will not get list of the methods. I am not getting anything. But if I write over here, name dot, here I am getting the list of the methods. Say I say to uppercase. Now, this is same like I was doing here, home, and I was writing my home dot kitchen. So I was calling this method. So similarly over here, name dot to uppercase. So it means I am calling a string class method. Now here in my home class, as we discussed, this is my class. This is user defined class. This is user defined methods. So we have defined this method body, but here we have not defined the body. We are just calling it. So it means it is predefined method. I have not defined it to uppercase. So whatever body is written, I, it is abstract for me. I do not know what is written behind it. I am just calling it. So similarly, I have not written this string class. It is predefined class. And it will convert this small letters to capital letters. So basically what we have what we have discussed is that what is a variable variable is a container that stores the data variable does not have any type it is a type of the data which we are storing inside the variable data can be classified as primitive data or non primitive data the difference between primitive and non primitive data is that primitive data we know the memory and range in non primitive we do not know the memory and range and all the class type of the data is non-primitive. So what are the primitive data types? Byte, short, int, long, float, double, care, and boolean. These are the primitive data types. And any class type of the data is non-primitive. Like we are creating this constructor. OB is a reference variable for this memory. Similarly, a string is not a data type. A string is actually a class, predefined class, which stores multiple characters of any type within the double quotes. And a string has predefined methods which we can call understood okay okay should we proceed now coming to the next point again i am creating a new class that is method type As we discussed in our last session, that when we are creating our own class and we are creating our own methods, these are the user defined methods and we have to define them actually. And when we define the method, so we have to specify the access modifier, we have to specify the return type, method name, and input to the method. So, accordingly, I am discussing one more point that is we can define the user defined methods in four ways as per our requirement first is without input and output say if i write public means everyone can access it void means it is returning nothing and I am writing the name of the method says someone and circular brackets every time you write a method you have to write a circular bracket 
curly bracket start and curly bracket close which is the body of the method and within circular bracket, bracket I am not writing anything I am not taking any input to the method so it means it is having no output void and no input and here I am just writing system dot out dot print ln I am giving the message sum is and with this message I want to add the value and if I write 2 plus 2 like this what it will do it will give the output sum is 22 like this is the string double quotes and when we write plus operator plus operator adds the value with the string so if I run it so again I will have to create the constructor of this class to run it I am calling so I am defining this method and I am calling this method let us run it so you see it is giving 22 it is not giving 4 because we are concatting adding the data with the string so it will add 2 again plus it will add 2 it will give me the output 22 but if I want 4 then what I will do I will keep it inside a bracket again so now internal bracket will execute this one and it will take this plus as an arithmetic operator and it will do the arithmetic operation of adding the two digits and then adding the value with the sum. Now it is giving you 4. But every time when I execute this method it will give me the fixed result. It will always give me four only. Now again if I create a method with input but without output. Now I am taking with input means I want to take the input to the method but without output. That also we can make public void sum2 so here within the circular brackets now I am passing three variables i, f and m three variables I am passing. If I just write in i and I do not write what is the type of the i it will give me the error so I have to specify the type. But I cannot pass the value with it like I was doing is equals to 8 it will give the error. So when I am defining the method I can define only the data type and the variable what value it is taking that I cannot specify okay here we were defining and we were saying it is not taking any input here it is defining and I am taking it that it is taking three inputs and input can be primitive data type or it can be string also now again if I write a body And I want to print the message M so I can print M and then I can add similarly circular brackets the value of I and the value of S I do not know what value it will take so it means internal bracket will execute first so value of I and F will be added and then it will add with this message M like here this is the string M and plus plus and the bracket value now here I do not know so it is not fixed so whatever the value I will pass in i and f and m it will give me the output
again when I call the method. So now from here it is compulsory to pass the value 4, 6 and string double quotes. Like it is take, taking three inputs, so we have to pass three inputs to it. And the order must be same. If it is int and then float and then string, so we have to take int and then float means 6.6f and message. Same sequence. And value will be i value will be 4, f value will be 6.6, .6, and m value will be this. And value is coming 10.6 the sum is also coming added so method without input and output method with input but without output one more we can define <coughs> now it is as per your requirement how you have to define with input and output both now we want to take both input and output so again i will write public and we will specify the written type now instead of void we will specify the written type say int and sum3 again i can take input say i j So here we are taking i and j as an input and it is returning instead of void it is returning int okay i will not specify the variable with written type i will just write the data type it can be int it can be double it can be byte as per your choice or it can be boolean so it can be primitive data type like here we can take primitive and non-primitive data type and it can be a string also like this so it, it is as per your requirement so i will just write int over here and what i will do i will write return i plus j so it means here we were printing the value printing the value not returning it but here it is compulsory to write the return statement and it should be the last line of my method last line of the method after that you cannot write anything and like it is returning int the return type should be int only like this is int this is it i plus j it will return the int type of the data now again if i write m dot sum 3 and say i pass 6 and 4 so it will pass the value of i as 6 j as 4 and it will return the value which i can hold in int result so it means this method is taking the input and i plus j value it is returning which i am holding in in int type of the data so we have to specify the variable also not only int, we have to specify the result here we cannot write if here i try to write it will give me the error because it is returning void so here i cannot do the return type now what is the advantage of using this return type now here it will print the value not hold it here also it will print the value
not hold it but here it is holding the value holding value which can be reused here we are holding 6 plus 4 value in this result res variable and i can reuse this value again like for example i can just write if result is greater than 10 only for the understand i am writing system dot out it is 2 rupees say i am doing the photocopies and if photocopies are greater than 10 rupees it will charge 2 rupees per copy else as it will charge 3 rupees so only for the demonstration purpose i am just writing that this value result i can reuse in my program to check what is my rate but if i try to do this thing in someone you cannot do it because someone is returning nothing i am not holding anything so i will not get anything here also i am not holding anything i will not get anything i cannot compare it i cannot reuse it but here it is returning the value which i am holding it and i can reuse it in my program yes the rate is three rupees if i come back to my data type example here again if you see over here two upper case method here to uppercase is a method now i have not defined this method this is a predefined method i have not written it it is a predefined method and it is taking no input you see circular bracket is empty khali hai. circular bracket is empty and it is returning a string the return type is a string here so what i can do if i call this method So two uppercase method is returning the value which I can hold it in a string n. So it means this method is performing action and returning the data n which I pass over here. So it will now print the n value. Now this method is what? No input but output. Again say I write one more method say mov dot length now again if you see this mob is a variable of a string type and length is a predefined method of this string length and if again you see it is not taking any input and it is returning int type of the data so it means its return type is int so i can store the value in int like this And I can print the V value. Or say one more thing. Say I write email dot care at zero. Now here we are passing the input. Why? If you look at it again, this care at is taking the input int type. And it is returning care type of the data. Care is the return type. So it means it is taking input and giving the output both like this. Like this. So the, the, when we are using a predefined library, 
then also we'll get the methods with input without input with output without output for our capital then 11 characters and then first character character at zero character with zero will print the first character a similarly over here when we are defining our own method we can define like this no input no output with input without output with input and output both and last one can be d with output but no input like public string so i'm now returning instead of int i'm returning string say get name and it is not taking any input it's empty so no input but it is giving me the output calling method calling method calling method as per my declaration and similarly calling method not passing any input but it will return me the output Is returning parameter. So I think you have understood this much also that what is primitive non primitive data types and then second thing is that when we are declaring our own methods defining our own methods so we can define the methods in four ways and these are the four ways and how to choose whether I want an input or not whether I want an output or not that will come by practice that will come by experience so it it is not fixed thing you cannot learn it so it is it is your method so it is your choice you want to input or not you want to output or not and it depends on your logic what on your situation what you want and accordingly you have to decide whether you want to input or not okay now i will again make one or two examples to understand this concept only. Should I proceed? Any problem up till now? Okay. Fine. So I will take, uh, give an, uh, two or three examples uh, of uh, this concept only, method declaration, so that, and uh, concept of predefined method, so that we can, uh, like, uh, understand the things in a better way. So I'm making one example. I am making one class by the name of even odd one. And as we have discussed, whenever you want are creating a class, it means you want to perform some action. We should not write the code inside the main method. Some people want to, when I ask them to write a program to do something, they start writing inside this inside this they start writing like this but it is not a preferred way whatever logic you want to write you should create your own method now what i want to do i want to take the number as an input and check whether that number is a even or odd so i will define my own method public void and the method name any name you can give like i have given chk number and i am taking 
num as an input. So it means it is taking one number as an input. I do not know which number, but it is taking num as an input. Now I am writing one control statement that is if if is a control statement in Java. If num percentage 2 is equal to 0. This is the if block. This is the else block. This gives me the remainder. If I write slash, it is a divide. Like for example, if I write 4 divided by 2, then what will be the output? The output will be 2. But if I take remainder, the remainder will be 0. If I write 5 divided by 2, then again it will give me 2 to the 4. It will give me the output 2 only. But if I give the if I write the remainder, now it will give me the remainder as 1. So this is this is divide. Divide is different from remainder. If I want to get a remainder, we will be using percentage. So whatever the number is, I want to get the remainder. And double equal to is a comparison operator, which returns true and false. Single equal to is assignment operator and double equal to is a uh, comparison operator. And I'm comparing it by the zero. That if the result is zero, then I will write number is even. Which number I can add it? I can add it with it. This number is even. Else, this number is odd. Now when we call the constructor, and I call the method, we have to pass the value to this method, num. So say I pass 8, so it means num is assigned with 8, and it will check whether the 8 is even or odd. It is even. If I want to check 11, then I have to delete the 8, write the 11 in place of it, save it again because I, because I have made the changes. And when I run the program, main is the entry point of the program from where the execution starts. And then it will assign the value 11 to the num and it will check it again and give me the output. <coughs> 11 is odd. But if I want to change different numbers, I have to change the value again and again, save it and then run it, which is not a feasible thing. Okay, so what should we do? We should get the input from the user at runtime. That is when I run my application, then it should ask the input from the user. Enter the number you want to check and when the person enters the number then it should give me the output whether it is even or odd. Now for that how to take the input from the from the user from the console. So again there is one predefined class that is called a scanner class. A scanner sc is equals to new scanner. System dot like system dot out is used to give the output. System dot in is used to take the input, and we take the input in this scanner class, which is coming from this util library. Now a scanner is a class again. When we write new, like here we are writing even or so. Whenever we write new, new is used with the class. So a scanner is also a class, but a scanner class is not defined by me over here. Here we are not writing any scanner. So it will give me the error. Now I have to specify 
from where this scanner class is coming so it will give me the option to import and when we import it will import this util package this is a package name like here com is a package name util is a package name from where this scanner class is coming here this is a scanner class this is a scanner class so again it is a predefined class i have not defined it now i will give the prompt to the user enter number to check what is this this is prompt to the user and then int n is equals to sc dot <coughs> next int now what is this like chk dot e dot check number we were calling this method so but we were also defining this method and it was coming from this even not class similarly next int is a method you see it is a method method means which has a circular bracket and again we are calling this method and we are calling this method through the reference of sc sc means scanner so means it is a it means it is a method of scanner class like it is a method of even not it is a method of scanner class so it means i am calling predefined method of scanner class we have not defined the body it is predefined now if this method is not giving me the output here int if method return type is void then i will not get anything in the return and if and if i do not get anything in the return i cannot check it because i i am not able to hold the value so hence the advantage of return type is that now it is returning the value of int type which i am holding in this variable n so whatever the number is entered by the user it will read that value and store it inside n variable and instead of 17 now i can pass n so whatever the value is n that value i will check and assign it over here Enter number to check. It is giving me the prompt six six is even. Now it, I am entering the value at run time, and it will read the value in n and pass it to the method. Again, if I run it, no need to save and make the changes to the method. I can change the value to nine, and it will give me the output nine is over. the objective is to explain you what is the meaning of this import library which is coming from this java library and there are many predefined classes in java like a string is a predefined class i told you similarly scanner and we have a predefined methods library which we can call directly without defining and selenium is also a library which we have discussed in our first lecture that selenium is also a library in which we will get some packages like here which we can import and then we can write our java application and we will get many predefined classes and predefined method which we can write to automate our browser understood okay okay should i proceed any problem in understanding this much fine okay now i am creating one more class even or two now here again i want to check the numbers even and odd but with a little bit of difference that is check all the numbers between 1 to 10 which are even and which are odd so here i do not want to take the input from the user which number you want to check i know the range 
that is check all the numbers in between 1 to 10 which are even and odd so i do not have to take the input from the user and already know the range so here i will create a method again and here i will not take any input here here i was taking because here i was taking the input from the user so i have to pass the input as a parameter parameterized method and this is non parameterized method i do not want to take any so it depends upon your requirement here i am not taking it because i already know the range now again if i copy it from here and paste it and instead of num if i write one that is i want to check them one and then again i want to check two and i replace num with two and 3 and 4 and 10 so we have to write this if and else if and else if and else 10 times for 10 digits which is again not good so here we'll be creating a loop so what is the loop in which we want to write the statement some statement in a continuous manner again and again then we can create a loop so now i am writing for int say i लिख लेते i is equals to 1 i is less than equal to 10 i plus plus so in a for, this is this is a block of for loop here we are initializing it by 1 and keep on incrementing until it it reaches the 10 so this is a for loop so i value will keep on incrementing and now if i write and replace the value i over here so first i will be 1 and it will check for 1 then i will be 2 it will check for 2 and it will be checking 10 times in that So same example but objective is to explain you the loop concept and one more concept that is here we do not require the scanner class here we do not require the parameterized method so it depends upon your requirement So it will check 10 times all the numbers even or odd. One more example. Okay. One more example of even or only. But here again with a little bit of difference that keep on taking the input from the user. Again I want to take the input from the user. And what is the logic? Keep on taking the input from the user and check the even and odd until the user enters 0. As soon as the user enters the zero, the program should terminate. So again, we have to make a loop. But in this loop, for loop, we exactly know how many times we have to check. Ten times we have to check. But in this example, next one, again, I want to check the even odd multiple times. But I do not know how many times. Because user can enter the zero after... 10 digit after 2 digit after 1 digit after 3 digit so it means i have to keep taking the input from the user again and again and check until it enters the zero that is the concept so here i will use one more loop that is called while loop the difference between for loop and the while loop is that for loop is a controlled loop in which we exactly know how many times we want to run the code but in while loop we do not know how many times we want to run like if i say get all the employees name in between 1 to 100 so i know i i will get 100 names but if i say get all the employees name whose salary is greater than 20000 then i do not know how many employees i will get so that is called while loop 
in uh, in which we have to keep on running until a specific condition until it is true so let us make one more example again i will create my own user defined method now again i am not taking input to the method why if you look at it when i run this program first one main method will be called once in a lifetime main method will not be called again and again main method will be called one time and it will take the input one time only next time it will not take input from the user because it this code will be executed one time only when we call the main method but here what is my logic that i want to keep the keep on taking the input from the user until it enters the zero so i will not take the input from the main method because main method will execute only one time so again i will copy it from here and i will keep it inside this method check num and it so it means you do not have to learn the things you have to understand the concept so some people learn the thing this is a scanner class will always be used inside the main method no it's not compulsory is it compulsory to create the constructor of the class from the main method only no it is also not compulsory we will we can create the constructor of the class from any other method also but main is my entry point hence we create the constructor from so now here we are creating the scanner class constructor from this method again i will get the prompt i will get the input from the user and again i will say why n is greater than 0 so i am creating one loop again this is a loop until we are getting this n is greater than 0 so we will keep on taking the input from the user again so i will again copy it and keep it inside the while loop so now what it will do it will run for the first time it will take input from the user n and if it is greater than 0 it will come inside and then again it will take the input from the user again it will store it inside n and if n is greater than 0 again it will go inside and take the number from the user and this loop will keep on going keep on going keep on going until n value is greater than 0 and then again i can check the value of n whether it is even or not inside this loop now this is a this is called while loop enter the number to check 6 so it will again ask me enter the number to check say 9 enter the number to check say 11 so it, it will keep on keep on taking the input and as soon as the uh, enter the zero it will stop any problem in understanding this much okay so we'll keep up to here only so in our next session we'll be elaborating more on it as at the same time uh, 6 o'clock only so you will be joining tomorrow at the same time and i will share this class video and example so that you can do the practice on your system okay and if there is any difficulty then we will connect and we can discuss it tomorrow
ओके यस 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 प्लीज